Hey, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be doing something that I really never wanted to do, and that is to a video on a bungee setup. There are plenty of videos out there, but instead of going for multiple of them and going to separate videos to figure out certain features of the bungee, I'm going to round it all up, put it in a ball, and call it the ultimate bungee setup. For everyone that wants to set up a bungee, this is going from explaining how it works to setting it up, adding certain plugins for functionality, and then some recommendations at the end. And of course, this video would not have been able to be done without our sponsored Revive Node. So if you guys want to check out Revive Node, and it's going to be in the description down below using the promo code diamond can get your 15 off your very first purchase and i'm going to be using them for the entirety of this video as it's easier to set up your server and create a bungee network without any pain or hassle so with that out of the way i'm going to explain every bits and bobs that you primarily need to understand before you actually start setting up the actual server once we have that we're going to do the full setup so let's get with part one shall we now i'm not going to go into this in depth i'm not going to explain it with difficult words or process this video is tailored to the people who have never set up or do not understand a what a bungee server even is so if you ever set up a bungee server before or if you know how to do it this video isn't for you you probably have it set up and there are other things you could probably be doing so don't waste your time get working on that skip this video for people that never set it up a bungee server is primarily having multiple servers all into one large network meaning you could have a bedwars server a survival game server a skyblock server all under the same network now the reason i'm saying network is because it's all connected it's not just one big server it's a network of servers and what controls that is the bungee server itself you can imagine this as a doorway into different rooms so once you actually go for that primary door you'll be able to experience every different room that's within that doorway so the bungee server is one single server that is a doorway into every Every other server that you can join within your network in order to actually start one i would highly recommend you start with at least three servers with this one i'm going to be explaining a hub a survival server and the actual bungee server and to remove some questions out of the way the bungee server cannot be anything else but the bungee server you need it to only to run the bungee files you can't put a survival game server in it you can't put a mini game no it only runs the bungee so if you're going to purchase this from a host if you're going to run it on your own machines or anything within that it can only be a bungee server it can run from anything from a gigabyte and i usually do it with two gigabytes so you have more than enough leg room for your server it is an overkill with two gigabytes. Yes, it is, but you have plenty of room. You can do it with a gigabyte, by the way. Everything from the Bungie server is completely normal. Anything from the Bungie will have a separate name, which is primarily identified in the community as subservers or the quote unquote rooms, I call them. So all these subservers can be whatever you want. Usually what they are is a hub, a lobby, and then whatever game modes or game types you have. So we have survival, skyblock, etc. It's really up to you what you set these up as. They can be anything. It doesn't matter. It just can't be mixed in with the actual bungee. The bungee is the brains of everything. The subservers is the fun of it. And with that, we are going to set these up with the configuration file. And I'm going to be showcasing some other plugins that can help you, such as Bungie Guard. Bungie Guard will make sure that no one can join for the back end of your servers, primarily because every sub server is going to be in offline mode. Notice doesn't mean you're running a non-premium Minecraft server. It needs to do this because everything again is going to be handled by the actual Bungie. It's the brains, remember that. So authentication, who joins, anything like that, it's all handled for that. But the back end isn't fully protected. That's why we are going to be adding Bungie Guard. I'm also going to be adding luck perms. So you have a permission based system throughout every single server. And that's primarily it. That's everything I really need to explain for the start of this video. I'm going to be showcasing it all by hand slowly so if you're looking for video that's quick and easy you're wasting your time with me one last tip please make sure once you finish with this video and have everything set up know the difference between a bungee plugin and a regular server plugin bungee plugins can only run on bungee servers they cannot run on sub servers and sub server plugins cannot run on bungee servers there are some rare cases where 
one of these plugins can run on both of them but what you need to do for that is always ensure you ask the developer if it can or it's probably written on the page bungee guard for example can run on both sub servers and bungee networks but the plugin we're going to use luck perms bungee can only be run on the bungee and it handles everything else for you it is does, it does not need to be added on the sub servers and one last final thing i know i've said this before but ensure with plugins that as it is one giant network that doesn't mean if you add one plugin to one server it's going to cross over to the other server the bungee does handle a lot of it but only if you have a plugin in the bungee it's going to probably communicate with the rest of the servers but anything in the sub servers is primarily locked in with that server so if we have survival and the hub if you add plugins to survival and not the hub none of those plugins will transfer over to the hub unless you actually add it this is why mysql servers are important as you can use that to bridge both of them together and hopefully that explains every single thing possible on creating a bungee server hopefully primarily i hope this didn't confuse anyone and we can get with the rest of the tutorial just fine all right to begin the process of actually setting up the servers now i'm not going to speed rush for any of this as it can be very important and some people might not understand exactly what's happening so to begin what we're going to do is actually start on the actual bungee server for that we're going to go into the bungee server itself and here we're going to install the version we want so going into our version changer we're going to install waterfall of course you can use bungee cord they are basically similar it's such as spigot and paper as one is more optimized than the other but of course i'm going to be using waterfall bungee cord is going to be the exact same process so for this i'm going to be installing everything on the latest version so 1.19.x i'll install that and then click yes once that's installed i can actually start up the server for the very first time by going to the console and actually clicking start now this might sound weird for some but what i like doing for the first time is actually stopping the server and letting it reboot a second time the primary reason for this is because the configuration file it randomly sets the server server row in the middle of the configuration file but once you reload it again it's at the bottom this might confuse some people so i just tend to do this so i don't have to modify anything later but it doesn't affect it whatsoever you can just run it once and configure everything and it will move any necessary configuration that it needs to afterwards even if you have already configured it i just do this because i prefer predefined hopefully that doesn't confuse anyone and again it is not important it's more of a pet peeve so heading over into the file manager we're going into the config.yml here is where we set up everything and normally people start at the top of of any file for me preferably i prefer going to the bottom as we can immediately set up the servers. Setting these up will help us on the top bit filling up any additional information. So let's set up the servers first and then we'll set up the additional information that we need. So in this case, we have lobby. We're going to rename that into hub and here we need to add the address. For that, it's pretty simple. I'm going into the hub server and we can just copy that IP address up top and paste it, replacing localhost and the port. And we need to add the IP and the port of our server so the entire numeric number we can even put a small MOTD for it I usually prefer these as just small descriptions of the actual server and we'll do, do hub server just informing that it's a hub server we can put it if it's restricted or not so only admin or users with certain permissions can go into it but it's going to be simply to false as I want anyone to be able to join now that we have that we can go ahead and copy and paste the same exact thing below and for this, we can do survival and we're going to change the IP again. So going to the main menu, clicking on survival and the same process again, just clicking the port and pasting it in right here. As you can see, the numbers are different. The ports are the same. So that is nothing to worry about, but we are actually done with this small section. It was very quick. I also forgot to change its survival just as a small description. Again, this is not super important and you won't even notice it while you're in game. We can enable forge support or disable it. A small icon will appear on the server, but again, this is not something too important. Online mode, if we wanted to allow premium players or not, I'm going to keep it at true. And here we have groups. So for example, we have MD underscore five, and this is of course the developer of Spigot. But in our case, we can actually put our own gamer tag. So for mine, Diamond XR, and I am an admin. This is how you specify certain users. You can use other plugins such as LuckPerms to, to set this up for you, but we're gonna keep it just the way it is. IP4, this is a must. 
you need to set it to true. Scrolling up, this is where you can predefine all the permissions. As you can see here, this is the group admin and it has the following permissions and it will also have the permissions below. And this is default, which will provide you the following permissions and anything above it will be denied. Or if it's not specified at all, you won't have it. We're gonna continue to scroll up and here you can see priorities. So for this one, we're going to add hub as we want you to join the hub first. But for any reason that the hub server does go down, we want players to still join the server. So we'll do survival. So ensure you have a space here. And, and just like that, if the hub server is ever down, it'll go to the list below, which would be survival. Now we're going to continue scrolling up. Here we have the MOTD for the actual bungee. I'm going to put something really simple that doesn't matter truly. And it's going to be just a bungee server. I'm going to put bungee network instead. We can set the max amount of players. So I'll put 100 if I want to. Now, if you're on a hosting provider, normally don't mess with this. If, if you're locally hosting, what is wrong with you, first of all, but you will need to set this up if you're on a local host. But if you are on a server hosting, I typically don't recommend you changing this at all. Unless you moved into a server host from an old one, then I recommend you checking this out as I've seen plenty of people who forget to change the port. But again, if this is the first time, don't worry about it. And we're just gonna do force host. So I want you to be forced to the hub. And just like that, we are done with the bungee configuration. We can go ahead and click save that. What I recommend is clicking stop and then click start again and just let it do a quick reload cycle. And just like that, we are all set up, no errors or anything, but now we need to do the subservers. To get started with the subservers, I'm only going to be doing one of them and it's exact same process on the next one. So if you're confused on what to do on the next server, just Go back into the video and repeat the same process all over again it's that simple but for this we're going to go into the hub server and as you can see it's trying to start but doesn't have a jar that's fine we're going to go into reversions and we're going to install what i highly recommend is paper and we're going to install 1.19 as it's the latest version at the moment we're going to click yes and go into console allow it to start up once we're going to accept the term of services and make sure our Java version is on par with the actual version, which it should all be except for the EULA. So we're going to accept that and just let up the server start up fully once. Of course, for the sake of the tutorial, I gave myself six gigabytes for these servers, primarily because newer Minecraft versions tend to consume a lot of RAM. And if you do not optimize, you will have a lot of problems with you running out of RAM just randomly. But now the server is actually started up. We're going to go into the file manager and here we have three files that we need to change. Again, let's start at the bottom and we're gonna go to the top. So we'll start at the spigot.yml. We're gonna go into here and make sure that we have bungee cord enable. We'll set that to true and click save. We'll go back into the file manager and then we're going would be the server.properties. We're going to look for online mode. Of course, you can always do control F to find these if you're not finding them immediately, but overall it's pretty simple. We'll change that to false. Click save again, go back in here one last time, and then we're going to go into the bucket.yml. Now, in this case, I will do control F and do connection. And here we'll do connection throttle and we'll put negative one. And then we can go ahead and click save. And that's everything you need to do. We're going to we're going to click stop and then start it up again. So all the files can correctly start up. Now, that's all we need to do in regards to just setting up the actual bungee. You could completely join right now and it'd be working. However, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to set up some additional features that you will find very useful more down the line. All right, I set up the survival server and now what we're going to do is add two main essential plugins that we need to basically get started. For that, it's going to be Bungie Guard and both Luckperm's Bungie Cord. These are created by the same exact developer. He is amazing in every way and it is super easy and I like the way that he set up everything to be easily installable. Now, the reason we're using Bungie Guard, this is to ensure that you won't have anyone randomly joining from your sub servers. The reason I say that is because you want everyone to be joining it directly into your Bungie Cord server not your survival or your hub they must join through that one door which is a bungee cord if they join for the other ones they can easily trick the server for example using a cracked account and having your name on it that way they have basically every permission that you set up for yourself and if you're worried that you don't have a premium server set up and you're using a non-premium server don't you worry you still need the same exact setup you want everyone to be joining through one direct route which is the bungee server not the sub servers so we'll download both this one and we're going to download luck perms and for that we're just going to go over here to bungee cord and as you can see it even states waterfall which is exactly what i'm using we'll download both of those we'll go into the bungee server and we'll go into file manager plugins and drag and drop 
both of them right into here. That's great. That was easy. We're going to stop the server once. We're going to start it up. And I'm only going to do one easy thing on the actual server. So it should actually have booted up by now. And we're going into Bungie Guard. We're going into token.yml. And we're going to copy this entire token. You can copy this into a clipboard if you want to or anything like that. We're not going to modify it. We're just going to copy it. Now that we have that done, we don't need to modify anything else within the actual Bungie server. We're going to only modify the hub and the survival server. For this, we're going to go into File Manager, we're going to Plugins, and here we can drag and drop only the Bungie Guard plugin. We do not require Luck Perms as it's only Bungie specific. We're going to allow the server to completely do a reboot, and once that, we're just going to reload this page, go into Bungie Guard, and here we're going to Config .yml. We'll move this last line, and in here we're going to paste in our new token. We're going to click Save Content, and just let the server reboot one last time. Again, you'll be repeating the same exact process that we just did in the hub server into the survival server. All right, final two things that I'm gonna be doing before we actually join the server now. First thing will be is we are going to add a server icon. And the second thing is to every sub server, I'm going to add citizens. This is so you're going to be able to just hop between servers. Again, players will be able to just fine I'm just going to add citizens just so it's simpler for you to fully understand how it works. If this is your first time setting up a Bungie server, again, this is not required. To begin with the server icon, I'm going to be using this website. And the reason is a lot of people probably don't have Photoshop. So I'm not going to be spending my time explaining to you how to do it on Photoshop when you can just come in and do it on this website for about 10 seconds, as long as you have your image pre-prepared, because I'm not going to be designing an image. I'm just going to be converting it to the correct size. But if you do have Photoshop, you probably know how it works and you just need to ensure that it's 64 times 64 resolution. So we'll come into this website. I'll leave a link in the description down below for it. It's a simple image converter. So instead of 32, we're going to do 64 times 64. And all I'm going to be doing is just making sure that this image of my YouTube channel is the correct size. Now that we have that in mind, I'm going to open up the file and just click convert now down here below you'll see that we can easily just download our files and we're just going to click that and click this right here we can just drag and drop this into our computer i'll just click that drag it over to my desktop simple as that just ensure that one it's a png and two it is 64 times 64. plenty of people get this wrong for the first time it's understandable why as long as you have those two set up correctly that's all you need now, one last disclaimer, I am not responsible for anything on this website and there are plenty of other websites that do the same exact thing. So just take that for a grain of salt. Now we're gonna go back to the Bungie server. We're going to go ahead and drag our file into here. And here you can see it's just name.png. That's because I set it as a random name, but we need to ensure that it's called server-icon.png. Now the .png is just specifying what file type it is. It's not the actual name, but the type of file it is. The server-icon is primarily important. As long as you ensure that your file is a .png and that it's named server-icon with a 64 times 64 resolution, you'll be perfectly fine. And just make sure you restart your server at least once. And that is all we need to get started with the actual in-game content. All right, so let's join the server. What we're going to do is simply just copy the IP of the actual bungee cord, and then we'll go over into Minecraft. And here we're going to add a new server we can even use whatever we want. We'll just call it Bungie Tutorial. And we'll add the actual IP address here. Click done and there you have it. Everything that we set up is right there. We have the server icon, we have the message, so that doesn't really matter, but we even have the amount of actual players we set up. Now, if we actually join, we should be... I feel like I messed up big time here. It's cool. It's cool. We can fix this. Let's just let's just reinstall the correct version of Minecraft. All right, I have the proper version of Minecraft loaded up right now, so you can ignore the error message that you saw. I was just the incorrect version, which was 1.18, even though we installed 1.19. That's perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and join the server, and just like that, we are in. Simple as can be. This is a terrible spawn. All right, so what I've done is simply gone into the hub server and gave myself operator just by doing slash op and then my username. And you would have to do this for every single server, but we do have luck firms installed. And the only reason I did that for now is primarily so we can give ourselves actual operator. And so I don't randomly die while I'm, while I'm in the server. I just want to ensure that a lot of people don't get confused beyond this point. It's primarily going to be setting up luck firms, which is very quick. 
but we're going to be going in and out of Minecraft very quickly. It's not that I don't want to be explaining fully, but I don't want to be confusing any of you at all. But as always, just go back into the video, take it slowly. You don't have to rush any of this. As you must remember, it's your server you're setting up. Take all the time you need. So the first thing we're going to be doing for luck perms is so simple. Hell PB, and we're going to type in user and the following, which would be your username. So mine would be diamond XR. You would place it with yours. And we're going to do perm set luck perms dot star once you have that typed in correctly click enter and just so simple we will have every single permission that luck perms provides us to actually set up other permissions within the server so hopefully that doesn't get confusing all it is is we are giving ourselves permissions to run a luck perm commands within the actual server now we can actually join the server properly and run and actually get started because you must remember those permissions that we set up predefined within the bungee config.yml have no effect whatsoever due to us actually using luck perms but with this we can do lpb which stands for luck perms bungee and we can just do editor with this we will have a menu that allows us to modify all the permissions that we need online which i really truly love as it makes things so much easier so here we can create all the groups all the permissions everything that we need for example, we are going to need at least three groups. So here we have all the users, here we have all the groups, and here we have tracks. We're going to stay focused on groups for now. We're going to add a new group and we're going to call it staff. And then we're going to add this group and we're going to create another group and we're going to call it admin. Or if you want to call it owner, whatever you really wanted at the end. But clarifying for this default is the default rank anyone gets. So that's member, a player anything however you want to call it staff if you really want to add staff that's what i highly recommend never give them operator give them staff related permissions that they can run without you going in the risk that they'll start destroying your server or banning anyone etc and then we have admin which i crudely just realized i've misspelled so let's first get started with default these are going to be regular players who are in your server you can create roles for people who buy ranks but we're not here for that if you guys want a separate video on that give me a month it takes a while but all we're going to be doing is adding these permissions right here over to them so if we go and if we go ahead and just add this permission which we can clarify that it actually works just by mistyping it and it'll add it for us simple as that and then we can click add here is true or false if they're allowed to use it and if, if it's expired or any context that you need but this is just to be able to run slash server which will come in use in a little bit we'll also go ahead and add the list command and just click that and click add we can now go into staff and here we're going to add just a simple bungee cord command reload and for that we're just gonna add that click and add simple as that so now we added some basic stuff we're actually gonna click save for now we're going to copy this link and we're going in game and pasting it that should set up some basic permissions for a few users but sadly i'm not going to be here explaining how look per fully works i'm just going to add some basic things so you can just get started there are different videos on how to actually set up luck perms it's the same process with bungee luck perms but overall that's just some basic steps so that your players can actually join the server now that we actually have that set up, we can use citizens. So if I do PL, you can see citizens is installed and we can come down here. I'll just set up a quick set world spawn. This doesn't matter. I just don't want to get lost later. And I'm just going to add a simple block and just place our NPC up here. It's going to do NPC create and we'll just name him survival. As you can see, that worked. We can do NPC cell if you haven't selected it or you left the server for any reason and we can do we can do npc add dash p and we can do server and survival so basically citizens command add minus p which minus p stands for the user who clicked it and we're going to do the command server survival that will get us to join the survival server so we can click enter if we run it ourselves slash server all right great so we are currently in the hub and if we ever click this npc all it is is going to be doing is sending us to the survival server which is this one here i have no permissions so i can do game mode creative and i do not have any permissions because i never opt myself but i can always just go back to the hub where i do have permissions and you always must remember that a lot of the things aren't going to be the same between servers unless you actually had a plugin but i can do game mode creative here just fine and like i said this NPC is just a small thing that you can do to make it easier for your players. We can even provide a quick 
items so npc equip and just add a sword to or not yep no never mind that works for me but as you can see it is very straightforward to actually setting up the bungee getting the permissions and getting a citizen plugin set up very quickly shoot shoot not even close not even close buddy but that ends this part of the tutorial let's get into the final part of it All right, so here are some quick recommendations that I can provide to you when starting off your server. Of course, you can add via versions, you can add via backwards as well, but you're going to need via version regardless. And basically it will allow any new version that come out to join your server without you needing to fully update your server. As it can be a pain to do it all at once and sometimes paper or spigot isn't updated on the very first day. So adding via version just allows new players from new versions to join your server without you having to fully update. And of course allows players from older versions to join as well if you set that up. I'm not gonna be showing any of these plugins how to set up as this video is already long as it can be. And the next thing I'm going to show you is Hub Basics. It's a simple hub plugin that allows you to set up very basic things within your hub. I've used it, quite like it. There are other ones. I'll probably do videos on different ones as well in the future. And then we have Server List Plus. This allows you to change, of course, the server list within other features that you can. Um, we're mainly providing free plugins i'm not doing anything paid and the final one but this one please take it for grain of salt as you will have issues down the line i'm not saying the developers are terrible they are amazing people and even creating something like this is out of the world that i could never do so please take it for grain of salt but you can add geyser just expect some issues to occur such as gui is not fully set up as they are in java and sometimes connection issues this isn't fault of the developer again he's doing something that we couldn't even do which is connect two games into one i'll give him praise and a lot of respect for even creating this please ensure that you are aware that you might encounter some issues down the line not because of the developer but just how minecraft is and of course some ram may be increased as well again sadly it's not fault of the developer he made it created an amazing plugin it's just minecraft that didn't create the most amazing game even though i technically work from it but these are just some quick plugins that you can add to your server and it totally helps out a ton well there you go guys that was the ultimate bungee setup now of course i've probably missed a few things here and there but overall that's everything that you need to fully do or if you don't want to do certain things of course but everything you primarily need to do to have a fully working bungee setup so you can start your very own community if there are some things that you think i missed or should do a separate video on leave your ideas in the comment section i love reading them and i really love if you guys left a like as this video took a while to fully make but other than that i truly hope you enjoyed this video i'm diamond and i will see you guys next time cheers